Hi, I'm John Benizio, and this is your Friday Extra. Recent federal and state rulings have the potential to add a few more devastating nails in the coffin of small businesses. A recent IRS ruling tying up some loose ends in the Paycheck Protection Program could force many small businesses to pay taxes on government aid that was supposed to help them through the pandemic. In a matter of just a few months, the Small Business Administration and the Internal Revenue Service oversaw the issuance of over 5 million PPP loans, totaling over $500 billion, all while continuously revising, updating, and wholesale changing the rules governing the program. Most borrowers have now received and spent their loan proceeds during their applicable 8 to 24 week covered period and are now turning their attention to the next phase of the program, applying to SBA for forgiveness of the loan. The CARES Act explicitly states that any PPP loan funds that are forgiven will not trigger debt forgiveness income. However, it was unclear from the text of the legislation where the borrowers will be allowed to deduct the payroll, rent, and other business expenses paid for with their loan funds. The IRS seemingly answered this question last week by definitively in Notice 2020-32 declaring that borrowers are not allowed to deduct otherwise deductible expenses if the payment of the expense results in forgiveness of a PPP loan concluding that to allow such a deduction would result in double tax benefits. As word sank in this week, accountants and bankers called small business owners to warn them to prepare for an increased tax bill. A trade association of accountants urged business owners to reach out to members of Congress for legislative relief. Leaders of the Tax Writing Senate Finance Committee, Chuck Grassley, an Iowa Republican, and Ron Wyden, an Oregon Democrat, asked the IRS and Treasury to reconsider their position and said Congress may act when it reconvenes in December. To the U.S. Treasury and the IRS, tens of billions of dollars are on the line. If the ruling stands, the government could recover money from business taxpayers, in effect, collecting 40 cents for every dollar they loaned out. On the state side, the annual report by the New York State Conference of Healthcare Plans, released this week, shows that state taxes on health insurance are estimated to cost privately insured New Yorkers more than $5.5 billion this year, increasing insurance premiums by 6 to 9%. New York imposes several taxes on employers and individuals who buy private health insurance coverage, and the levies are paid by consumers and included in their premiums. In the Siena College poll of registered voters released in September, nearly 80% of New Yorkers rejected this idea of increasing health insurance taxes to close the state budget cap, Notice, noting that employers and consumers should not have to pay more for health insurance in order to close the state's budget deficit. As noted by Leanne Politi, the executive director of the conference, as New York state leaders consider options to close the growing deficit due to the pandemic, they should not impact the cost of health care. Recently, the New York State Senate surpassed the threshold to create a supermajority within the state Senate. As pointed out by State Senator Alessandro Biaggi, the supermajority enables the enactment of legislation that supports working New Yorkers. As the creators of the jobs upon which working New Yorkers rely, we must all speak out to our elected officials and remind them that taxes only come when profit generates their existence. A link to contact information to your elected officials can be found in the information box below. This has been your Friday Extra.